So my name is Rebecca Chung and I'm the comms and training officer for POPs and I'm here this morning with Lynn Kelly, POPs's head of operations and we're just having a bit of a discussion haven't we Lynn about International Women's Day and the topic that they've chosen this year which is choose to challenge um, and just really getting some thoughts and perspectives on that. Um, so I wanted to ask you really what choose to challenge means to you. Well, choose to challenge means a number of things to me. Um, as a woman, I've found that I've often had to challenge that inner perception of, of being a woman. Um, and what that means, maybe not just so much to me, but to other people. Um, and often I see women, particularly younger women, who may limit themselves because of that inner perception of, we are, I am a woman, therefore there is disadvantage from this perspective or that perspective. Um, and so there's that limiting, self-limiting potential that we need to challenge for ourselves, but also support other women to, to and empower them to challenge that for themselves. Um, and on a wider scale, I'm aware that for women in my generation uh, and, and maybe the younger generations, in, certainly in, in this country and in some of our sort of similar countries, that being a woman maybe doesn't carry the disadvantage that it might have done many years ago. But I'm very aware that there are other parts of our international community um, and cultures for which the advancement of parity of esteem and opportunity for women isn't the same and it hasn't moved at the same pace. So for me, the choose to challenge is about challenging our own inner perceptions, but being very aware of the perceptions and the situations that exist in other parts of the world and as women coming together to appropriately um, and sensibly challenge those on behalf of the women of the world. So I know when we were chatting offline, you I said to you, where did where did your approach to this come from? Because I've always known you as a massive advocate for women and you're not a person who has a lot of self-limiting beliefs or anything that have come about as a result of your gender. So we were just chatting a little bit about where you felt that kind of thought life came from. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, um, I suppose one of the things I was always encouraged um, as, as a, you know, as a child and a young woman by my parents was, uh, if you read, you can learn. And, and so I've always had that interest in, in looking back on events um, and, and understanding events in history that have changed the course of history. And one of that, of course, is that there are many women who have changed the course of history by the things that they have challenged uh, and the things that they have achieved on behalf of other women. And so life for me now, as a nearly 59 year old woman, is very different to life um, of, of, of a woman maybe a hundred or so years ago and that's because of the achievements of other people that have gone before me and so where I've seen those opportunities that those those things happen and um, they've given me opportunities which I really haven't had to think too much about taking um, and so you know I have got the opportunity to be able to to drive from the age of 17 I had the opportunity you know to to make the decision to to go to university when I was a 42 year old woman and, and, and still had care and responsibilities for children and a job and a home and all of those things. Um, and it wasn't perceived as though I was neglecting any element of my life. Um, so I suppose by looking back and realizing what other people have done and how they've changed the course of history. So for example, I can now get a mortgage or I, and I, you know, I was able to get a mortgage in my own right. But 30 odd years ago when I first got married um, and I was going for a mortgage they weren't necessarily that interested in my earnings it was my husband's payslips they wanted um, but that's all changed because of the people have stood up for that perception um, so I've been able to take advantage of that um, and I have to because I've had to be self-sufficient for the last 17 years um, so looking back being appreciative of what people have done and how they've changed 
the, the opportunities um, and the course of history and then taking advantage of that um, by then taking my own opportunities as they've presented um, and not limiting myself because of gender. There are other things to consider, like your ability, your capability um, and your current circumstances. So actually gender comes for me, not even on the list, never mind far down. So um, yeah, just, just being appreciative of other people. And, and I do believe that that's something that I have to pass on as a woman to new generations of women we were and men. Offline, weren't we? we were talking yeah. about your family and how you shared that with your your sons. You've got two sons. So tell, tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Like, what do those conversations look like? Uh, yeah, I I think I've always felt that um, it's important as a mother of sons to ensure that they understand the opportunities that women can and should be able to take advantage of and, and not be disadvantaged because they are women. Um, I've, I've often wondered what I would have been like as the parent of a girl, but, um, but as a parent of sons, I've always instilled in them that perception of whoever they partner with in life, um, that, that partner, whether it be male or female, that partner should have the same parity of opportunity um, and sharing of responsibility in their relationship um, because partnerships are exactly that or they should be a two-way street it's about giving and it is also about compromising and if you both do that on both sides then you can achieve things better together so just because one side of that partnership happens to be female doesn't mean they take a greater share of the responsibilities like the cooking the cleaning the washing and um, the running of the children to st the school run actually can you fit that into your day as well? Yes, so share it. So, and also understanding again, that history of what other women have done. So I do think that there's a responsibility. So the choose to challenge isn't just about the looking back um, and, and taking advantage now and, and challenging in the here and now. It's about challenging from the for the future. So passing on that baton as well of ability to challenge. But unless you understand the history, sometimes you're not able to fully challenge what's what's to come. So we need to carry on this education, not only of our of our of our, our young women and girls, but also of our men, of our of our sons and young men. Men can be feminists too. <laughs> um, they have to that they also can understand that challenge of gender doesn't have to be the divisive limitation. Um, that sometimes it's perceived to be. That's great, Lynn. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I really, really appreciate your input into what we're doing today. Um, so thank you, and I look forward thank to you. you more about it offline. Thank you, and happy International Women's Day, everybody. Happy International Women's Day.